Okay, welcome back. So it is finally here. It's really happening and it's going to change everything. So we knew it would happen one day, but it wasn't until I saw the Kansas City Business Journal article today that it finally sank in. For real, simultaneously dreading and anticipating, just not sure how to feel. A similar narrative unfolded some 37 years ago when the slow, elderly, and portly 45 ACP was ignominiously outed by the fast, sexy, nimble 9mm Luger. After a 74 year run, the Beretta M9 replaced the 1911, veritably doubling capacity from 7 to 15 rounds. As we know, this ignited a debate that still rages to this day, though less fiercely as the years march on. On May 17, 2022, the Kansas City Business Journal with James Dornbrook reporting released a story titled, Lake City Plant Will Make New Army Ammo for First Time in 65 Years. If you didn't know, Lake City Army Ammunition Plant was established in 1941 by Remington Arms Company and occupies a staggering 3,935 acres in northeastern Independence, Missouri. Lake City is the world's largest 556 manufacturing plant, period. It can manufacture and produce up to 1.6 billion rounds of ammo. Currently, Olin Winchester LLC is managing this and they're in the initial stage of a seven year management contract that started October 1st, 2020. So the plant is government owned but contractor run. While we all knew per the NGSW bid requirements that the new round would be a 6.8 millimeter, until the news of SIG winning the 10 year contract was announced in April, Lake City was only producing very small quantities of 6.8 to use in the prototype weapons that were part of the NGSW submissions. SIG's MCX Spear, of course, uses a hybrid case 6.8 by 51 called the Fury. The Kansas City Business Journal reports, and I quote, the new 6.8 millimeter round uses a patented lightweight metallic case that can handle higher pressures resulting in faster velocity, increased accuracy, and more lethality. As we know, the case is a hybrid metal case. Uh, it's brass and then some kind of compound that I still haven't been able to find out exactly what it is, some kind of comp composite material. They also report that Army Brigadier General William Boroff is the official responsible for this ramping up of production at Lake City. Because this is such a massive undertaking, SIG will handle the complete ammunition production for the military for the first three to five years or up to seven to eight years, depending on how long this new 6.8 millimeter manufacturing facility takes to build and its production machinery to be tested and approved. The Army plans to accomplish this by building a temporary production facility while simultaneously building an all new production facility just for producing the 6.8 as well as some yet unannounced cartridges. Rumors have been swirling that 762 by 51 and 556 by 45 will go away once 6.8 millimeter is in full production. I am happy to report that as of now, they're saying this is not true. I quote directly again from Brigadier General William Boroff, quote, we will continue to produce 556 millimeter and 7.62 millimeter at the current rates we're at now. We're not slowing down that production, so we'll have no drawback in that capability. We're building a new 6.8 millimeter ammunition facility that will have plenty of space to house that and some other programs. Regardless of the adoption of the 6.8 millimeter and what you think, we can all agree that keeping current production levels of 5.56 and 7.62 to be a wise move given the fact that many of our allies and also ourselves currently still use these cartridges. So what is the bid challenge by Lone Star Future Weapon Systems doing to the plans of Lake City? So at the end of the day, we're seeing the twilight of a golden era of 65 years of 5.56 and 7.62 being the military cartridge for the U.S. Army. So what say you? Is this a good strategy to build the new facilities for 6.8 millimeter and future cartridges while keeping 7.62 and 5.56 production up for now? Do you think they've completely screwed it up? What do you think the chances are that they'll have the new facility up and running for 6.8 in three to five years, seven to eight years? Do you think they'll even have it in 10 years by the time the big contract with SIG-1 ends? Drop it in the comments below. 
Fill us in on any inside info you've got beyond what I've shared here. Inquiring minds definitely want to know. As always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description below the links for my Patreon and Teespring for any gear. Everything goes to help support the channel. Thanks for joining me on the journey. This is a tough, bittersweet one to do. LW Road, out. Yeah.